three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Ladies, gentlemen, days, and gays, this is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you're all having a great day whenever you're checking this out. I've got a review for Blackberry, which stars Jay Burrow and Glenn Howerton, and it's written, uh, written and directed by Matt Johnson, who also plays Doug in the movie. You most likely know Matt Johnson from the 30s, Operation Avalanche and Nirvana, the band, the show, which uh, his co-writer, Matthew Miller, also went ahead and worked on. So, okay, to to date myself here, I'm old enough to remember when the Blackberry came out and how anyone who was anyone, that was like, that was like when the iPhone came out, when... Uh, if you're a kid, if you had a Tickle Me Elmo, or, you know, you got a Sega Genesis or a PlayStation, the BlackBerry was that thing, that that uh, megaphone of status of, you know, I'm somebody, I have a BlackBerry, which is crazy when we think about how advanced phones have become. But that was really that rallying cry of, if you want to be someone, you have a BlackBerry. I still remember when three-way calling became a thing and how insane that was as a concept. But I think people forget that it used to be like 10 cents to send every text message. And as someone who greatly prefers to send text, then go ahead and actually have a long ass phone conversation, uh, you know, that could add up really quick. So the whole unlimited texting and everything that was revolutionary at the time, but the BlackBerry really helped us get there. So it it was really quite fascinating to go ahead and watch this film knowing where technology and where cell phone carriers have ended up. So so Jay Burchell, who I got to say, I I think Jay Burchell is very underrated as a dramatic actor, whether we think of something like This Is The End or Goon, or uh, Man Seeking Woman, which I know was a weird ass show, but man, I had so much fun uh, with that with that show. And even down to the How to Train Your Dragon movies, he's a great voice actor. Uh, the way he brought Hiccup to life is it was really inspired, honestly. So I'm I'm a fan of his, and he's really playing the straight man uh, in this. He plays uh, Mike uh, Lazar- Lazardus, who is uh, working in research in motion. Uh, with his friend Doug, played by the aforementioned Matt Johnson, and basically they're they're a startup. They're a bunch of nerds or a bunch of geeks, but they're passionate about coding. They're passionate about being someone. They're passionate about going ahead and you know changing the world for the better. Which at the end of the day is really what I think a lot of nerds uh, who work in the you know it's very Silicon Valley ish in that way. But they're trying to go ahead and get some traction and go ahead and make some money and actually be able to make, you know, what they're doing feasible, which goes ahead and brings in uh, Glenn Howerton's uh, Jim uh, Basile, who just got fired from his company. And let's just call it what it is. He's a shark. He's a he's a hundred percent a shark. He is running out of options. He's definitely burned bridges multiple times, it seems like. And he goes ahead and meets Mike and Doug, and they have this uh, very quick lunch. And Jim Flout says that I'll come in, I'll help make you guys viable and help make you all money, but I need 50% of your stock right now, and I need to be CEO. And that's his pitch. And it's one of those points where as desperate as Jim is, he recognizes that Mike and Doug are even are in even even more desperate state of affairs than he's in, and it's crazy how. And I, I think most of us have this with a friend that we've known for a while. You get to that point with your friends where you can pretty much have a whole conversation without saying a fucking word, 
And Mike and Doug are definitely having one of those because Jim throws down the gauntlet. He flat out says, I will give you $20,000 today if you make me CEO, but I need the 50% of your company as well. And it's one of those things where when your back's against the wall and you're desperate and you feel like you're out of options, any offer sounds like a good offer. And we find out that Mike and Doug had sold these modems that they thought were going to bring in all this money, and then they didn't get anything back. They never got money back for them. And it's one of those things where you go, yeah, someone like a gym can help you on that front, but at what cost? And the other really big thing that I think, and I, I wouldn't even say this is a this is a stereotype, but it's something when you're so unsure of yourself and your startup. I mean, I'll even use myself as an example. When you're so unsure of your art and what you're doing and what your worth is, you don't have the capability to stand up for your art or stand up for, for yourself when it comes to what you're selling. It's such a... It's such a a trap that I think so many people fall into in not knowing their worth. And the bottom line is Mike and Doug, they just don't know their worth at this point. And Jim takes advantage of that. But at the same time, Jim is in such dire straits. He should be taking this more seriously as far as morale. And that's really, at the end of the day, kind of the most tragic thing about this movie is that Mike has a clear code of ethics as far as what he wants to do, what he wants to bring to the world. He wants to make sure that, you know, their parts and everything are made in the USA. He doesn't want to outsource or anything like that. But this is where the big juxtaposition comes. This is where your art versus what fe- what's feasible versus people who don't give a shit about your art and just care about the bottom line. That's where all those variables crash. And it's so fascinating to see the way Baruchel plays Mike and how he really does start off with, as this man with good intentions, with a, with a strong moral compass, and to see how Jim and the circumstances around him corrupt that aspect of him and end up eventually corrupting everything that Mike, Doug, and to a lesser extent, Jim, have built up. And and it's so cool to see how the walls close in on that front. But at the same time, it's fucking sad because you realize that if things had gone, you know, if this T had gotten crossed and this I had been dotted, that we might be having a different conversation right now entirely. So I mentioned those modems earlier. There's this point <laughs> when, you know... uh Jim comes in just like as a house of fire and, you know, at, flat out asks him how much you spent on these modems that you sold. And he spent, oh, well, it's like 1.2 million, uh, 1.6 million. I was like, Jesus Christ. And what I love about Glenn Howerton, of course, we know him as Dennis Reynolds from It's Always Sunny. But uh, I had uh, AP Bio, which if you've not seen AP Bio, you should see AP Bio. It's on... It's on uh, Peacock. It's wonderful. But what I really love about Glenn Howerton in this movie is when he gets angry, it's it's fascinating, but it's horrifying. And yeah, you could say the same thing about Dennis Reynolds, but there, there's a level of humanity to Jim as the film goes on that's not there with Dennis, because Dennis is, is a straight-up sociopath. But Jim, there's this how do I put this? He respects Mike, but to a certain point, but at the same time, he needs Mike. And that's where their relationship really becomes fascinating because they do fill in the shortcomings of the other person. The problem is neither one of them wants to admit their shortcomings, which is where the streams get crossed. And that's what leads to their downfall. And that in particular in itself is fascinating in itself to witness. And, Jim in particular, there's this point with BlackBerry and what they've done where you go, okay, cool. You could sell this patent. You could sell what you've done. Uh, You know, you obviously wouldn't get as much as being your own company, but you could, you would be very well taken care of, you know, get out while the getting's good. And Jim doesn't want to do that. And it feels like Mike 
does at a point. It feels like Doug definitely does. And Jim is all about more. It's all about excess. It's all about the life that he feels like he's owed. And the fact that what happened at his last job, he feels like he is owed these extravagant things that he's trying to go ahead and um, and gather and go ahead and inspire to. And the, the greedier Jim gets, the more frantic things become at the office and the more that the disconnect between Jim and Mike grows in particular. There's a there's a point where they pitch a BlackBerry to this company. And I love that initial meeting because it really shows Mike and Jim's dynamic. But Mike Flout basically lays it out to him and goes, like, dude, don't lie to me. Like, you can lie to them, but do not lie to me. Like, that is something, like, I need to be able to trust you. And considering what they're trying to accomplish, it makes sense that Mike would just be like, dude, this is my, this is my floor. I need to be able to trust you. And Jim goes, okay. And the way that trust is manipulated and twisted and really ripped apart, as I mentioned, this is where, you know, the art you know the 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 rubber meets the road as a, as it were this is where the art and functionality and the logistics and all those things clash and it's about finding a way to make it all work and jim doesn't really care about making it work outside of making a profit mike has actual pride in his work as well as doug and you just see how that is a constant battering of you know battering of uh of, of, of the of the meaning of the minds as it were uh between the three of them and it's it's really fascinating to see how doug and mike's relationship deteriorates because these guys were friends these guys were best fucking friends they founded uh, research in motion together and to see how doug really ends up becoming the odd man out at a point you just go damn i get it it's it's very Steve Jobs in that way, and while I enjoyed Steve Jobs, uh, the uh, Fassbender, Winslet, and uh, Seth Rogen film, I dug this more. There's just an element of tragedy to this as the shoes start to drop and as the walls start to close in, where I just went, God damn, this fucking sucks for <laughs> for pretty much everyone involved. Um, one of the things that I really like about this is that there's a ticking clock just to get to the BlackBerry. There's a point where uh, Jim Flout says that U.S. Robotics is a year ahead of us on building this phone. So, <laughs> in his words, get these nerds to drop everything and build the fucking phone. Again, his words. And, again, from from this early point on, we find out that Jim, I believe, has like mortgaged his house on this loan that he gets. So Jim has a lot of skin in the game, like like from jump. Even though he's the CEO, he's got a lot riding on this. His livelihood is riding on this, and so there's this sense of desperation of, oh my god, this needs to fucking work. But the problem is that desperation never goes away, and it's 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 so fascinating to see how. Again, just a couple tweaks, we would maybe be having a completely different conversation about BlackBerry just as a brand. But there's just there's multiple points where Jim is just being an asshole. There's a point where, uh, before they go to that meeting in New York, uh, Mike is gathering his stuff and Jim's outside and he is just laying the horn on for like 30 seconds straight. And <laughs> and and Mike is clearly a very frantic very unsure of himself guy anyway. So Jim really, you know, bo- bossing him around in this way is it, it, really quite fucked. And it's, you just go, well, dude, you're not going to get the best out of your employees if you keep doing this shit, a lesson all you corporations should learn. But, but you see these moments from Jim that you just go, man, he's slick. Uh, when they're on their way to the meeting, the pitch of Blackberry, he flat out tells the cab driver that, my wife is in labor. You need to hurry up. And the cab driver goes, oh, shit, okay. And you just even see these little looks that Mike gives Jim going, huh, okay. So it really is win at all costs for you. And that's a mentality that not everyone has. And, again, that goes to your whole moral compass where Jim is comfortable doing things that Mike is not. And the cl- the constant clashing of that and the constant re- 
um, not reimagining, but the reevaluation of their friendship in real time and their partnership in real time and what that all looks like to the bottom line and to what they're doing in the industry. It is a fascinating narrative that the film keeps up independent of the whole concept of just getting us to building the BlackBerry. Uh, there's a timestamp at the 41, uh, 41 minute and 10 second mark, and we find out that Mike, Mike fucked up. Well, let's call it what it is. Mike fucked up. But the look that Glenn Howerton's gym gives Mike, it could legit melt stone. It is, <laughs> when you watch the movie, uh, assuming you watch it at home, seriously, 41, 41 minutes, 10 seconds in, pause it. The look that Howerton has on his face is fucking priceless. It's fucking perfect. And I, I love it. I, I love that shot of the film so, so much. But then there are these moments where Mike and Jim, they, they have these breakthroughs in their, in, in their partnership and in their friendship. As I mentioned, there's a point, I want to say it's in 2003, where unlimited texting is introduced. And that was a BlackBerry exclusive at the time, which I think a lot of people forget. And Jim flips his shit in the best way. He's like, fuck yes. And yeah, I, I mentioned it earlier, but text used to be 10, uh, 10 cents a uh, 10 cents a text and it it they do a great job of bringing in the ceo of palm pilot into this so there's some actual uh, intrigue as far as that ceo being like you know let's combine palm pilot with blackberry and and jim and mike are kind of going like nah now we're good and the way that he goes ahead and, and tries to body him you go shit okay it's it's so crazy the amount of moving pieces that are occurring in this movie. And by the time you get to the end, I just had this appreciation for this tech journey that I went. I not only dug this movie, I dug the shit out of this movie. Getting my final thoughts, the the truth bombs that this film drops as far as Blackberry and where things ended up. Where things end up is crazy crazy too and I, I won't spoil that for those of you who aren't aware but where Mike Jim and Doug alone end up is is just crazy to me uh Carrie you uh uh Ewes is in this as well uh Mike and Iron Mike Michael Ironside is awesome in this what what we get from him he comes in as, as this uh this real hard ass who's there to you know whip the nerds in the shape but He's awesome once he's introduced. And just the more this film went on, this movie, it's two hours. It does not feel like two hours. It flew by like a motherfucker. And I can't honestly wait to watch this again. I got the screener for this, and I don't do this often with screeners. I actually watched it three times. I, I, I watched it when I initially got it, day of, and then I watched it once or two more times before the screener expired. I just, I adore this fucking movie. And for those, like, again, we're early in the year. I get that. But don't be surprised if they're pushing Glenn Howerton for Best Supporting Actor. Because he's that great in this movie. This is a transcendent performance for Glenn Howerton. And he will, his phone will be ringing because of his performance. And it should be. And I, and I, and I, I know I mentioned him earlier, but man, the way that Matt Johnson very much plays the the Waz role as far as uh, Seth Rogen and Steve Jobs. Matt Johnson nails his shit. He he's just heartbroken in the way that he's kind of iced out in the way that Doug and Mike's relationship evolves and deteriorates. It's really sad to see because you think about how that does just happen, but given the circumstances of how it occurs, it's it's really heartbreaking and. I mentioned him earlier, I know, playing the straight man, but Jay Burrishell does a great job in this as well. And he should not be left out in the cold as far as uh, awards consideration for how well he does in this. I, I really don't have a complaint about this. I would say I haven't reviewed it yet. I probably will here at some point. But this is a perfect double feature with uh, Teron Edgerton's uh, Tetris. This is a perfect double feature. If you want to just have a cool, fun fucking afternoon, watch these back to back. Watch Tetris, watch Blackberry. You will not regret it. This is a fan fucking tastic of the highest degree. It is one of my favorite films so far of 2023. I 
I, you know, we obviously have a ton of stuff still that still needs to come out. But my God, watch this movie. It is well worth your, worth your time. You will have fun with it. And yeah, fucking rules. Blackberry, fan fucking tastic. But everyone, Blackberry, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on uh, YouTube. Just type in The Real Pineapple and our channel will come up. You can find us most places you listen to podcasts. Uh, SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneUp, and Samsung Podcasts, to name a few, at The Real Pineapple. Uh, you can follow me on TikTok at BlackShazam775. You can follow me on Letterboxd at BlackShazam. And you can follow, uh, follow us on all the places at linktr.ee slash jhunter real pineapple that again is r-e-e-l pineapple and you can follow me on instagram at jhunter real pineapple and don't forget to subscribe to me on twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunter real pineapple uh thank you so much for listening everyone we're gonna have quite a few things drop in here in june including a review of all the indiana jones movies leading up to Indiana Jones and the, and the Dial of Destiny. So I'll have reviews up for Raiders, Last Crusade, Temple of Doom, and yes, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I have not watched since I saw it in theaters, so it'll be interesting to see how that ages. Uh, we'll have reviews up as well uh, coming up for The Flash, as well as the new Transformers. Probably going to review the original Michael Bay Transformers uh, leading up to this new one and then i'll have a review later on in the month for asteroid city i'm so excited to review that as well but everyone thanks again so much for listening stay safe out there take care of each other and i'll talk to you soon